A very good morning to all of us and praise the Lord on this beautiful morning. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made and we are grateful. We thank God that he's allowed us to see this second month. And we also thank God that he's allowed us to be in his presence this morning. We thank God because it's not in vain that we gather in the presence of the Lord. Every time we gather in the presence of the Lord, we have this confidence that he hears us. So allow me to begin with the word of prayer this morning, even as we allow the Lord to come and take preeminence, as we tell the Lord, Father, we invite you in the midst of us. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness upon our lives. We are so grateful, dear Lord, that you've given us the breath of life, the gift of good health, and above all, the gift of salvation. Father, we are grateful that we have a sound mind. We are so grateful, mighty Father, that we can reason. We thank you and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, that you've redeemed us from the dominion of darkness into the dominion of the Son that you so love, Jesus Christ. Father, we are grateful and we bless you that, Lord, we are no longer in darkness. We are no longer slaves to fear. We thank you and we bless you this morning. Receive our adoration and receive all the honor, dear Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence this morning. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know that as we come into your presence, we can come confidently to your throne of grace to find mercy and grace to help us in times of need. And this morning, as we come into your throne of grace, we thank you and we bless you. This is the confidence that we have that as we pray to you this morning, you will hear us. And because you will hear us, Father, you're going to do that which is in accordance to your will. We thank you, Father, because we know that your will surpasses even our expectations, Lord. We, we thank you and we love you. We thank you, Father, because it is written in your word that where two or three are gathered in your name, you shall be in the midst of them. And this morning as we gather, Lord, this is our confidence that you are in the midst of us. That as my viewers and my listeners tune in, as we join our faith together, Lord, we thank you that you're in the midst of us. Receive our worship this morning. Receive all the praises. We enthrone you, dear Lord, and we pray. Take preeminence this day. We give you praise and we pray, mighty Father, would you increase, Lord, even as we decrease. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. We thank God so much for allowing us even to see the second month. And I take this opportunity to say karibu to this virtual morning prayers. And thank you for always tuning in ever since we began. We are so grateful for you that is tuning in for the very first time. Jiskie nyumbani, feel at the feet of Jesus. And we love you. Thank you for finding time to come and fellowship with us. And you that will be tuning in later, may the Lord bless you so much. For you that has uh, become our regular congregants online, we thank you so much. We are so grateful that you found time and you always find time to fellowship with us. This morning, allow me to begin our reading and even our morning glory. Just giving thanks to God because he's been good to each one of us. The Bible says that we give thanks to God because he is good and his mercies endure forever. Matthew chapter number 6 verses 9, Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. He told them that after this manner shall you pray. That say our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as we go to give thanks to God this morning, that is where I want us to dwell this morning. That Jesus told his disciples that he's not only your God, but he is our father. He is in heaven, but he still remains our father. And therefore, after this manner shall you pray that our father who art in heaven, that we have a relationship that this morning as we gather, we are not just coming to, we are not gathering to just bubble words. We are not gathering to fulfill a program to take that 
today I woke up for morning glory, today I made my prayers. No, we are gathering for more than that. We have a relationship with our maker, that even as we call him our God, he's first of all our father. He is in heaven, seated in heaven, ruling the world from the throne, but he is our father. Therefore, as we approach him this morning, we are approaching him as a son or as a daughter would approach a father. Now, you know the way you approach your father and you're not afraid of anything. And it, it also communicates trust. And there is love that you feel. You are predisposed to them because you trust that whatever it is you are asking of them, there's nothing that they cannot be able to give you. So long as it is within their ability, they will give it to you. But this morning we have a father who is willing and he is able. And he's not limited in anything. He's willing and he's able. So I want us to go before the Lord and first of all, before we can even begin anything, just go before him and tell him, Father, thank you that I have the privilege of calling you my father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Father, this morning I am grateful. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. That as we gather this morning, we are not gathering before any other God. We are gathering before a God who's given us a privilege to call him Father. Thank you for adopting us into sonship. That we can cry to you and call you Abba Father. And the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirits that we have been adopted into sonship. Lord, we thank you this morning that as we come to you, we come to you as your sons and your daughters. And one of the things we know is that you will not cast us away from your presence. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. This morning as we come into your presence, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because as we come to you, you know what we desire. You know what we need even before we can make it known to you. And Father, we are grateful this morning. We give you praise and we give you honor that we have the privilege of calling you our own. We have the privilege of being called by your name. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We are the people who are called by your name. And for that, we thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Father, that we bear your name, the name that is above every other name, the name that is above every other circumstance, the name that is above every situation, that, Lord, we know that with you nothing is impossible. And as we come into your throne of grace this morning, this is our confidence that we are coming to our Father who is in heaven, our Father who is not limited by anything, our Father who loves us so unconditionally. We are coming to a Father who knows no mountains, who sees no mountains, and if anything, mountains melt like wax before you. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you for the privilege to call you Father. Thank you for the privilege to come to you, that we can come to you confidently, that even when we have stumbled and, and slipped, oh God, we can always run back to you and you will embrace us. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. This morning we are grateful, Father, that you have given us Jesus Christ who intercedes for us all the times. And you've also given us the Holy Spirit, who is our intercessor, who intercedes for us with groanings that words cannot express. Father, we thank you and we bless you that this morning as we gather, Lord, we know that we are gathered and you know the desires of our hearts. And even as we delight ourselves in your presence, Father, you will fulfill our desires. You will exceed our expectations. We love you and we honor you, dear Lord. Thank you, Father, because we know that we have gathered to one that is able, able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can imagine or even ask of you. Father, we thank you and we love you. We honor you and we appreciate you. Thank you for allowing us to call you Father. We give you praise and we give you honor. Receive all the adoration this morning. I want us to 
read words from the book of Exodus chapter number 14. Exodus chapter number 14 beginning verses 13 and I'm reading from the message Bible. And the Bible says, Moses spoke to the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you today. Take a good look at the Egyptians today, for you're never going to see them again. God will fight the battle for you. And you, you keep your mouths shut. God said to Moses, why cry out to me? Speak to the Israelites, order them to get moving. Hold your staff high and stretch your hand out over the sea. Split the sea. The Israelites will walk through the sea on dry ground. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the Egyptians keep up their stubborn chase. I'll use Pharaoh and his entire army, his chariots and horsemen, to put my glory on display so that the Egyptians will realize that I am God. The angel of God that had been leading the camp of Israel now shifted and got behind them. And the pillar of cloud that had been in front also shifted to the rear. The cloud was now between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. The cloud enshrouded one camp in darkness and flooded the other with light. The two camps didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and God with a terrific east wind all night long made the sea go back. He made the sea dry ground, the sea waters split. May the Lord bless the reading of his word this morning. I said I was reading from the Message Bible. And this is a story that we well know. But there's something that I wanted us to learn. And I pray that the Lord will speak to us this morning. Even as we desire to keep on what... I don't know what the theme of your church is this year. I don't know what the theme you're running with this year is. But one of the things that I want to urge us this morning is to keep moving. So long as we had it from the Lord, keep moving. You had it from the Lord, open that business, keep moving. Now we are at a situation where the Israelites have left Egypt and they have come by the sea. And the Egyptians are thinking that these people must be stranded and they start chasing after them. Now that is beginning from verses 1. They start a chase after them. Now the Israelites look behind and see the Egyptian army and they are, they are thrown into panic. They start panicking. Now they start telling Moses, is it that they were not cemeteries big enough for us in Egypt? We would rather have stayed as slaves in Egypt rather than become corpses in the wilderness. And Moses looked at the people and had only one, one statement to tell them, that do not be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work of salvation for you today, not tomorrow. Today, this very day that you're seeing the Egyptians, today he will do the work of salvation. Take a good look at the Egyptians today for you're never going to see them. Moses must have been such a leader. And I admire Moses. No matter how human he was, no matter how angry he would become, I admire, I truly admire Moses. Because he's leading a troop of two million people. They are making all manner of noises. They've started panicking. And the truth is that there's an Egyptian army following them. And they are almost desiring, the Israelites are almost desiring to go back to Egypt. They are almost desiring to surrender themselves back to the Egyptians. Even after they had seen all that the Lord has, had done and delivered them. 
they are almost desiring to go back to Egypt. Now Moses tells the Israelites, God will fight the battle for you. And you, this is your only assignment. Keep your mouth shut. Even as you keep moving, keep your mouth shut. Why? Because the way you're talking, you're talking defeat. So what you do, keep your mouth shut. Don't start confessing your defeat. Don't start confessing your helplessness. Keep your mouth shut. Now God is asking Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the Israelites and order them. Give them a command to get moving. As for you, hold your staff high and stretch out your hand over the sea. Split the sea. The Israelites will walk through the, through the sea on dry ground. Now that is Moses that has been given assignment. Everyone has an assignment here. Now you, the Israelites, are to keep your mouth shut, but you're going to move forward. As for you, Moses, stretch your hand over the sea and split the sea. You have never seen this before, Moses, but stretch your hand. You have seen how we worked in Egypt. And even in this, I'm expecting you to be obedient. So stretch your hand over the sea with your staff and the water will split. Meanwhile, I, the Lord, will make sure that the Egyptians keep up the stubborn chase. And I will use Pharaoh and his entire army, his chariots and his horsemen to put my glory on display. Now that is our God. That every one of us takes the assignment and you take it seriously. Now, even as you move forward, I will also be having my assignment and the Egyptians will, always have, will, will also have their assignment to ensure that I display my glory with these Egyptians. So you Israelites, take a good look at them. Take a very good look at them because you will never see them anymore. Because by the time God is done displaying his glory with them, they will be no more. Now the angel of the Lord that had been leading the Israelites moved behind and the cloud too moved behind. And the Bible says that the cloud was now between the two camps and it enshrouded one camp, the camp of Egypt in darkness and it flooded the camp of Israel with the light. And of the two camps, none came near the other. Now it was sort of a day and night in one day, because Moses is talking about her today, in one day, there was a camp that was in a total light, a flooding of light, and there was another one that was in total darkness. Now Moses stretched out his hand, and with a terrific east wind, the Lord made the sea go back all night, not immediately, all night. And the Israelites were able to walk through a dry ground. Where there was a sea, the Israelites were able to walk on a dry ground. As for the Egyptians, they thought, now this is the time. And they went, followed after. They, become, they became more stubborn and became in full pursuit of the Israelites. Then God looked at the morning watch and decided it is time. Moses, stretch your hand again. Let the waters come back. And this time as they came back, they came back full swing immediately. And the Egyptians started saying that the Lord is fighting for these people. Let us run away. But the Bible says that the Lord caused the wheels of the chariots to be clogged in the mud. And that is how... Now, I love, I, I love a portion of scripture that says that that particular translation of the message Bible says that the Lord dumped them in the sea. There's somewhere that it says that, that the Lord dumped them in the midst of the sea, that none of them survived. Uh, I'm looking for that, yes. It is in verses 27 to 28 that says that as the day broke and the Egyptians were running, the sea returned to its place as before. 
God dumped the Egyptians in the middle of the sea. They were dumped in the middle of the sea. As the Israelites, they moved and they moved forward on a dry ground as if there was no sin. And I'm here speaking to someone that has been in prayer and fasting maybe in January. And we are looking and thinking maybe we should have stayed in 2022. 2022 began better than where we are at. I was a bit sure of what was happening in 2022, but now how 2023 is behaving, I'm not even sure. Now, when we listen to the political analysts, they are telling us to brace ourselves for an even tougher time economically. And we are here thinking like the Israelites, was it that there were not enough cemeteries? Maybe it's time we went back to 2022, but I'm here to tell us, keep moving and keep moving forward. Let's keep moving forward, making tangible progress. So long as it is the Lord that says, so long as it is the Lord that says, the Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it. Is it the Lord that told you, keep at it? Did he say so? Please keep at it. As long as you heard him say so, please keep at it. And I know that because it is the Lord, one of the things is that the Lord is not a liar. He's not a man that says this why this way today and tomorrow he does not even remember or he has some sort of uh, amnesia no that is not our god when he speaks he fulfills that which he says i want us to read uh, psalms chapter number 18 verses 35 and 36 from the cev version psalms 18 verses 35 and 36 the CEV version that says Psalms 35, uh, Psalms 18, 35 and 36. The CEV version says, You alone are my shield. Your right hand supports me. And by coming to help me, you have made me famous. You clear the way for me, and now I won't stumble. And this is a prayer I want us to make and a declaration I want us to make that even as we move forward, we are moving forward telling the Lord that he alone is our shield, that his right hand supports us and he will come to help us. He alone will come to help us and make us great because when a man is helped by God, you can't help but notice the result. It may look as if we are doing it effortlessly, but there is someone behind us who is supporting us. Someone is helping us. A mighty hand is helping us behind us. That as we make progress, be it in that business, be it in that marriage, be it in that family, that the more you pray, you're thinking that the more I pray, the more it's getting worse. You've been trusting God for a loved one that is not born again, a loved one that has been in drugs, a loved one that has become so rebellious. And the more we pray, the more they become worse. Trusting God for your marriage, the more you pray, the more they become worse. Trusting God for your children, the more you pray, the more they become worse. Trusting God for the place of your work, the more you pray, the more they become worse. The office politics have become so many that your mind is now clouded but i want to tell you keep moving forward keep moving forward it is not time for us to look back keep moving forward now the bible says that the lord will clear the way for us and we will not stumble and i want us to connect that with uh, psalms chapter number 34 verses 5 that says psalms 34 verses 5 and i want us to read from the NLT version that says those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy no shadow of shame will darken their faces those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy no shadow of shame will darken their faces and I want us to go before the Lord and ask for his help because when we ask for his help 
we are declaring that our trust is in you. Our eyes are on you. Our minds are on you, Lord. You are our shield. You're the one that will help us. And as you help us, it will be evident. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you for reminding us that in whatever course we are undertaking, we need to keep moving forward. Father, I thank you because there is a word that you gave for each one of us for this year. And Father, I pray that you who watches over your word to perform it, you who is not a man that you should lie, you're not a son of man that you should change your mind, I pray that you may uphold us with your righteous right hand. And I pray for my viewers and my listeners this morning that Jehovah God, you're going to hold us up with your righteous right hand, that we will experience your help by your mighty hand. Father, I pray, may you be our glory. May you be our shield, I pray. I pray that you who is the lifter of men, you're going to lift each one of us from the Maya clay. Father, I thank you because when we wait on you patiently, you come through for us. Lord, you hear our cry and you're able to pick us from that mud and Maya, dear Lord, and set our feet on a high ground. And I pray for someone this morning that, Lord, you're going to make the path beneath us wide, O oh God, that we will not stumble as we walk. We will not stumble as we run, O oh God. We will not stumble as we saw. As we fly, we will not stumble. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. How I pray, mighty Father, that our minds will be stayed on you, that you may give us perfect and constant peace, that we may be able to make the decisions that we need to make, O oh God, that we will be able to make sober decisions, we'll be able to make sound decisions, now that we will have the peace, the perfect peace that keeps our minds and our hearts. Lord, I pray for someone this morning that could have could, uh, could be at the verge of giving up because of their marriages, at the verge of giving up because of their businesses, because of their children, because of their loved ones, because of their places of work. The office politics have become so much. Lord, I pray this morning, may they hear your word this morning, saying that this is the way, keep at it. Father, I pray for strength this morning. Lord, I pray for someone that has been waiting on you to come and make a way for them. Would you strengthen them, Lord? Thank you because those that wait on you, Lord, you strengthen them. You renew their strength like that of an eagle. And this morning I pray, would you renew our strength like that of an eagle? Father, I bless you and I magnify your name. This morning I pray, faithful Father, that Lord, as we look unto you for help, may you remove every shame. May you remove every disgrace. Lord, those that have asked, where is our God? Father, I pray that they will be the same people that come to us and tell us that your God is surely at work. Father, we thank you because you will show your salvation to someone this day. You will do your work of salvation to someone's life this morning. Father, I thank you and I bless your name. I pray, mighty Father, that you may help us, that as we keep moving forward, Lord, we will not keep looking back to where we've come from. We will not keep looking back to what we've known, oh God. We will not keep looking back to what we've thought is our comfort zone. Help us to keep marching forward, dear Lord. Help us to keep marching forward, I pray. Lord, I thank you and I praise your name. I pray for someone this morning. I pray may you uphold them with your righteous right hand. For those that are almost giving up, Lord, I pray uphold them with your righteous right hand. Father, I pray this morning, may we not give up, Lord. And there is someone that is feeling helpless and hopeless already. Lord, I pray right now, would you strengthen them in the name of Jesus. I pray that your Holy Spirit would breathe in us and renew our strength in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we surrender to you, Lord, and declare that you are, you are our help. We declare that our help comes from you, who is the creator of heaven and earth. Our help does not come from the east or from the west. It does not come from the mountains. It does not come from the people we know. 
Though you use men, Lord, but our help comes from you. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. May our faces be radiant, O God. May our faces portray and showcase your glory, faithful God. We thank you and we love you, dear Lord. Proverbs chapter number 4, verses 18. Proverbs chapter number 4, verses 18. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version and also the Passion Translation that says, But the path of the just or the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. The Passion Translation says, But the lovers of God walk on the highway of light. Hallelujah. But the lovers of God walk on the highway of light, and their way shines brighter and brighter until the perfect day. That now that we have desired to move forward, forward only is where we are marching. We are not going back to where we've come from. We are not looking back to our comfort zones. We are desiring to move forward. And as we move forward, because we are the lovers of God, because we are the righteous ones, because we are upright, then we will walk on the highway of light. And you know what happens when you walk on the highway of light? Number one, you see where you're going. There's vision. Number two, there's access. And number three, you can also be seen. That as we move, as we walk on the highway of light, those three things will happen to us. That there will be, our vision will be clear. Number two, there will be access. We are not grop, groppling in darkness. We are not going to do that. We are not going to stumble in darkness. And then number three, we will be seen. We will not be covered. That those three things, as we walk forward, we are not moving backwards. Mm -mm. We are not of those that shrink back because we are defeated. The Lord clearly says that he is not pleased with those that shrink and look back. We are those that maintain our confidence. Hebrews chapter 10 verses 38. That verse has come to my mind. Hebrews chapter number 10 verses 38 says that. Uh, verses 38. Let me read from the Amplifier that says. But my righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live by faith, respecting man's relationship to God and trusting him. And if he draws back, Shrinking in fear, my soul has no delight in him. The passion says, and he also says, My righteous ones will live from my faith. Will live from my faith. I love that version. My righteous one will live from. We are living from a point of faith. That we are living by faith and from a point of faith. We are not stumbling. We are living from a point of faith. But if fear holds them back, my soul is not content with them. Do not allow fear to hold you back. This time, this year, as we arise and build, do not allow fear to hold you back. Fear of the unknown, fear of the known, fear of anything. Do, do not allow fear to hold you back. That as we move, we are operating from a point of faith. And as we operate from a point of faith, as we walk, we are going to walk on the highway of light. So go before the Lord and tell him, Father, help me to keep on this journey. And as I walk, may I walk on the highway of light. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you this morning because of your promise. Thank you because your promises are yes and amen. And in Christ Jesus, we declare a resounding amen. Father, we thank you this morning because of reminding us that the path of the 
just, the path of the righteous, the path of the upright, shine brighter and brighter. Father, I pray that even as we continually walk forward, as we continually move forward, help us to make progress, that we will walk on the highway of light. As we walk on the highway of light, our vision will be clearer. Father, as we desire to arise and build, our vision will be clearer for this year. As we arise and build, dear Lord, as we walk in the highway of light, we declare that we will have access, access into the treasures, access into the resources that you want us to have and possess. As we walk in the highway of light, we will be seen. We will no longer be covered. Lord, you're going to remove every veil from our faces, from our minds. Every veil is going to be removed. And Lord, I thank you because the entrance of your word bringeth light and causes understanding. How I pray for us this morning that you would help us, mighty Father. That we would ensure that we are walking in the highway of life, beholding your word which is the perfect law of liberty. And as we look intently into that law, Father, you're going, to, you're going to perfect us. Lord, you're going to return us to our original identity. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. This morning, we thank you and we bless you. Father, we pray, may you help us, Lord, that we are not going to cast away our confidence. We are going to look up to you. We will not allow fear to hold us back. Fear of anything. Thank you, Lord, that you have not given us the spirit of fear. But you have given us the spirit of your son, Jesus Christ. We do not have the spirit of this world. But we have the spirit who, has made, who makes us know what is freely available for us in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you this morning and I glorify your name. I pray for my viewers and my listeners this morning that Heavenly Father, as we walk in the highway of light, you're going to make our paths brighter and brighter. We will not stumble in darkness. We will not stumble in ignorance. Father, we pray, may you distinguish us, Lord, because we are walking in light. May you distinguish us, Lord, in the marketplace, in our homes, Lord, in our churches, in our congregations, in our various companies, Lord, in our businesses, Father. May you distinguish us because we walk in light. We walk in the highway of light and we are the lovers of God. Father, I thank you and I bless your name. I declare that our children will walk in the highway of light. That, Father, you're going to distinguish them among their peers, Lord. Would you distinguish them in the name of Jesus Christ? Father, I pray may there be a remnant among our children that no matter the generation they are living in, may there be a distinction among their peers. Father, we thank you and we bless you this morning. Distinguish our businesses. Distinguish our giftings. Distinguish our abilities, distinguish our strategies and our plans, we pray. Father, we thank you and we love you. Thank you, dear Lord, because you watch over your word to perform it. And I pray as we operate from a point of faith, dear Lord, would you help us, mighty Father, that we will walk in the creativity, we will walk in innovativeness, we will walk in excellence and not mediocrity. Lord, we thank you and we love you. Father, we give you praise because the same mind that was in Christ will be in us. We will let the mind that was in Christ be in us, be formed in us. That mind of obedience, the mind of creativity, the mind of innovativeness, that Lord, we are going to walk in willingness to learn. And we are going to walk in obedience and then we shall eat the best of this land. Father, we thank you because we are the seed of Abraham by the virtue of justification in Christ Jesus. May you help us to do the works of Abraham, I pray, that we will walk in willingness and in obedience. 
Father, I thank you and I bless your name. Bless the work of our hands, we pray. Bless our minds, we pray. Bless our destinies, we pray. Bless our marriages, we pray. Father, I thank you and I magnify your name. Receive our worship this morning. As we are almost coming to our end of prayers this morning, I want us to read Psalm 65, verses 9 and 10. Psalm 65, verses 9 and 10. The Bible says, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, You visit the earth and make it overflow with water. You greatly enrich it. The stream of God is full of water. You provide their grain when you have prepared the earth. You water its furrows abundantly. You smooth its ridges. You soften it, you soften it with the showers. You bless its growth. Now I want us to go before the Lord and make a prayer concerning the works of our hands, concerning our nation, concerning our counties, our states, our towns, our cities. And in accordance to the word of the Lord, declare that he will visit the work of our hands. He will visit our businesses. He will visit all we do and even our nation and make it overflow with water. He will greatly enrich whatever we do because the stream of God is full of water. Now this is the other thing that the Lord provides the grain when he has provided, when he has prepared the earth. That he first of all waters the earth. And once he has prepared the ground, then he will provide the grain. Now we are asking the Lord, Father, even if they say that we should brace ourselves for harder economic times, we know that you are able to water the ground. We know that you are able to bless the growth of the seed that you will provide. And as you prepare, as you water the ground, as you water the work of our hands, you will provide the grain that we are supposed to sow. You will provide the grain and as we sow it into the ground that you have prepared, we will get 30, 60 and 100 fold that our grain will not fail because we are planting it on the ground that the Lord has prepared. That the Lord is going to soften the ground with its showers. Famine will be a thing of the past. That there will be an exemption for we that know our God. There will be an exemption for us. That he will bless our growth. So we are going before the Lord to tell him, Father, bless the work of our hands. And last thing, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Lord, because you're the one that prepares the ground and you prepare it with the waters from the streams of God that overflow. I thank you, Lord, because you've told us in your word that after you've prepared the ground, you provide the seed and you also bless its growth. Father, I pray for each one of us that you're going to bless the work of our hands, that we will not labor in vain. Thank you because for every labor there will be profit. That as we labor, Father, you're going to cause us to profit. Father, I thank you that as we go out, we are blessed of you. As we come in, we are blessed of you. In whatever location we are, because we carry the seed of God and because we are the seed of Abraham, in whatever location we are, we are going to flourish and prosper. And Lord, we thank you because of our counties. We thank you because of our cities. We thank you because of our states. We thank you because of our nation. Lord, would you water our nation? Would you enrich us with your showers, I pray. I pray let famine be a thing of the past. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you heal our land, we ask of you. Would you heal our businesses? Would you heal our economy, mighty Father? 
that as we labor on those grounds, we are not going to labor in vain, that as we sow the grain that you have given us, it will yield for us 30, 60, and 100 fold. And Lord, I pray for the churches, Lord, the churches that are planted all over, that as we sow the seed of your word, may it germinate 30, 60, and 100 fold. I pray that no seed of your word will be wasted. The enemy will not snatch it from us. I pray let there be souls being won to the kingdom. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a sprouting of souls in the name of Jesus. And I pray, mighty Father, that we, even those who are called by your name, Lord, will be exempted, Father, that we will bear 30, 60, and 100 fold, even in the midst of economic hard times. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you praise, Lord, because you watch over your word to perform it. We thank you because as we stand on your word, Father, we stand on your promises that cannot fail. We give you praise and we give you honor. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence this morning. And we thank you because in your presence there is fullness of joy. In your presence mountains melt like wax. May every mountain melt like wax, O oh God. We thank you this morning because we know that you have heard us. And because you've heard us, Lord, you will do that which is in accordance to your will. Thank you, Father, because as we go out, the, the sun will not smite us by day. The moon will not smite us by night. We declare that the arrows that fly by day will not come near us. And the terror that comes by night will not come near us. We are exempted by the fact that we are the seed of Abraham, justified by our faith in you. Lord, we bless you and we magnify your name. Would you be with us this day, dear Lord? Bless every giver, Lord, as they sacrifice to give, Lord. May you bless them and bless them abundantly, dear Lord. I pray that it shall be given back to them, Lord. Cause it to overflow in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we love you. Thank you because we know that you have heard us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much for tuning in and also for praying this morning. I know the Lord has heard us and he will do that which is in accordance to his will. I want to give us this opportunity to give unto the Lord. We have two ways of doing that. We have a Lipa 9 Pesa. Our pay bill number is 842050. We also have a direct bank transfer. The details are provided on the screen. May the Lord bless you even as you do that. And for you that has been given, may the Lord cause that your pockets will never run dry. The Lord bless you so much. I want to invite you to our Sunday services that are happening. We have, we have two Sunday services, one happening at 7.30 a.m. and the other one at 9.30 a.m. And you're most welcome. We are located at General Madenge Road next to Mamangena Girls and opposite Aga Khan Hospital. It will be such a joy to have you. So karibu sana. The Lord bless you and bless you abundantly. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom and have a blessed weekend.